thank you so much, JJ, for taking some time out of your busy, busy calendar. But I think this is a very exciting week for Rivery with the launch of uh, integration with Python, something that has been hugely requested and there's like a lot of buzz around it. So, so yeah, it's just brilliant to have you again. And I just want to ask you a few quick questions. Thank you. It's my pleasure. I'm very excited to showcase this new capability. Yeah. And I'm just going to like dive in right away. So I think like my first question is why Python, you know, like, you know, what was so many solutions are going to like low code, no code. Why this choice to just like go ahead and like add this layer of like a sophistication, I guess, to the platform. Yeah, that's a great question, Daniel. I think in uh, modern data management tools, there's oftentimes a trade-off between ease of use and capability. Uh, on one hand, we have tools like Airflow that offer sort of a great set of open source features and customizability, but that often require a team with strong programming skills to implement. On the other hand, we have tools in the market that offer no or low code ETL, as you mentioned, uh, which while being easy to use, they sort of lack the flexibility to integrate with more complex data transformations and, and process flows. With Rivery's Python integration, one doesn't have to make this trade-off any longer. Uh, for teams that required the added customization for advanced data processes, Rivery Python offers a solution that is both easy to implement from a Pythonic integration point of view, while offering all of the robust features that come with Python and all of its extensible libraries. Amazing. I mean, lots of Rivery users are data engineers. And of course, this has been one of the most requested, I guess, features in the, in the past like month and year. So it's, it's, it's finally here for them. But can you just give me a sense of like, what are some of the main use case for someone, um, you know, for some of these teams using Python or maybe like some of the main use case, even for like some of the design partners or how people are using it right now? Yeah, certainly. I think even in our closed beta testing, where we sort of opened up uh, Rivery Python to sort of a small subset of our, our users, we already see some patterns emerging of people really taking advantage of this capability. Um, you know, three main use cases that we see, you know, one of them is uh, performing bulk file uploads, uh, especially in reverse ETL processes, uh, you know, sending a, a CSV file to say like a Salesforce endpoint uh, to update their sort of proprietary database with information that's been transformed through Rivery. Uh, you know, that's something we've seen uh, almost uh, time and time again. Um, using data science libraries such as NumPy and Pandas for more complex data analysis, you know, stuff like prediction models, uh, data cleanup, uh, machine learning, uh, that's popped up uh, a couple of times. Uh, and the third one is uh, using Python for custom API integration. Uh, so APIs that are using, say, like an older SOAP protocol, uh, returning data in, say, like an XML format, uh, or even unconventional REST calls that are using sort of custom headers uh, that we don't natively support with our action rivers. Uh, so I'd say those three are, are some of the use cases we've seen, and we're sort of excited to see uh, what more uh, our clients will do with this capability. Amazing. And for someone that is curious to kind of like learn a little bit more about what it looks like, because even though, you know, this is, I guess, for the most sophisticated data processes, like it's still like fairly straightforward and simple. Like what does it actually look like? Yeah. Um, I'd love to show you actually, it's, uh, it's quite easy to implement, um, within our platform here. If you're familiar with our logic rivers, uh, you simply go to create a new logic river and now we have an extra step type. So uh, in addition to sort of the SQL DB transformations, rivers, actions, and snowpark, now we have a step called Python. And in sort of addition to this Python capability, uh, we actually have a new data structure within the platform called data frames. Uh, so what data frames are, are an extension of the pandas data frames uh, that has sort of been the de facto standard now in data science and data analytics in uh, creating a flexible data structure where it's easy to move data in and out, as well as transform, slice, append, uh, do sort of those processes that are required for data frames. Uh, so just to do a quick demo, uh, I'll show you how easy it is to create a data frame. You simply click add data frame here, and we're going to create one called hello world data frame. And now our data frame has been created. And in a step before Python, we need to first move data into this data frame. So the way we do that is we create an additional logic step. 
SQL DB transformations. We select our connection, set the connection that we have, and we're going to query a table in our database. Uh, in this case, I have one that's created, a simple hello world table, three columns, we have five rows, and we're going to simply take this query and write it into here. Now, we want to take the output of this query to go into a data frame, and we're going to select the data frame that we created earlier. Right here. So now, in Python, how do we get this data into our virtual environment? Well, let me first talk about the, our Python integration itself. So here we see with our Python step, we have multiple ways to write Python code. Uh, one of them is to import a .py file and have it show up within our workspace. Um, but even easier than that is we have inline Python capability. These are just some examples that we have in the comments, but our first step is to import this data frame in. So it's a simple from Rivery data frames, import hello world data frame. Next, we can set our resource size. Depending on the amount of computational power that you envision this data process will need, you can set the warehouse that will be sort of in our backend an EC2 cluster that will initiate the amount of computation and, and cores needed uh, to, uh, to run this process efficiently. We can also install additional libraries. Uh, these are sort of the built-in libraries that come with every uh, Python virtual environment that gets initiated in Rivery, but say we want to add additional ones, it's as easy as typing them into here. And these libraries will then be imported into the virtual environment and you will have access to all of the functions that come with these libraries. In this case, we're not going to need any beyond the ones that are already built in, but the next step will be us uh, writing some data to this data frame that we've created. So we've already have some, uh, some pre-built code here that'll help us do exactly that. Uh, so the first one is we're going to just print out the contents of this data frame. And we're going to list all of the data types. Uh, and in the next step, we're actually going to add an additional record to this data frame. So we're going to create a sixth row, uh, an, uh, another record uh, with ID six, all caps, hello world, exclamation, and then give it a value true. Then to save the results of this data frame transformation, we just hit, uh, we just put in this syntax called uh, the save function. Hello world, in this case, it's data frame. That's safe. Once this executes, it's going to take the changes that we made to this data frame and update them within the Rivery environment. Last but not least, we want to push these changes back to our data warehouse. So we simply create another logic step, SQL DB transformation, Snowflake. And from our source, instead of selecting a query, we're now going to select the data frame. And we're going to set the target to a snowflake table. Overwrite. I've already uh, executed this river here um, and it's executed successfully. So now we're going to check our new data, uh, our new table in Snowflake. We can see here that we now have a new record with ID six, with all caps, hello world, exclamation point with the value true. And that's it. Now we just built a Python script that modifies the data frame, pushes those changes to the data warehouse. And now we're able to see those changes within our Snowflake. Amazing. Well, wow, thank you so much for this kind of like super speedy um, tour um, and demo. I mean, what type of kind of like going back to like, you know, how it's been used so far, et cetera, like what type of data team you think can benefit from, from this, uh, the release Python integration and who within these data teams is going to be able like to make the most based on what you think is going to happen or based on what you've seen so far? Yeah, great question. I think Rivery's Python integration can benefit data teams that are sort of diverse in their technical capabilities. Modern large data teams generally have data analysts, data engineers, data scientists, QA, and of course the executive leadership. 
And oftentimes there are sort of ad hoc requirements and experimentation that needs that is needed to converge upon a solution uh, demanded by the data analysts and executives and that which is created by the data engineers and data scientists. Uh, this you know, includes overall data flow as well as sort of pieces of specific implementation. Uh, Rivery's Python integration will allow all technical parties and data teams to rapidly prototype these changes and uh, additions to these data processes while allowing the leadership and any data stakeholders visibility into the process. Even small data teams can benefit from this in that smaller teams usually have people that are sort of jacks of all trades and that, you know, they come from a software engineering, data engineering background, but now they have to implement an overall data flow to meet the requirements of the data analysts and data scientists or just other, uh, other parts of the organization that require data. So this Python capability gives them another powerful tool in order to bring those insights and those deliverables uh, to their stakeholders, uh, no matter the amount of background that they have in, in sort of Python and programming necessarily. Amazing. Wow, that was like really, really good. Thank you so much, JJ. And yeah, looking forward to seeing, uh, you know, what, uh, what our users do with it. And, and, and I'm sure it will be like a massive success, especially because it's been so many people have been waiting for this for so long that I'm just excited to see like, you know, like the uptake uh, for existing river users and new ones that really want to make the most and like build this more like complex uh, workflow. So thanks again, JJ, and I'll speak to you very soon. Thanks, Daniel. It was my pleasure. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks.